Hi, my name is Richard Inch. Uh, I'm with Armand Gerlach in North America here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We want to talk about zirconia today. I want to understand the key differences in the zirconias out there and uh, in particular on our portfolio and also um, having a main focus on our solid effects and the HT+. The uh, indication has first and most important to do with the strength and then comes the aesthetics and translucency because it just makes sense if your product doesn't last it's not gonna um, it, it, it doesn't matter how pretty it is if it breaks constantly nobody's going to be happy not your client the doctor and not the doctor's client the patient um, and then of course there's a little bit of uh, economy um, in there efficiency price etc and uh, there's some wishes what maybe the, the patient or clinician has but in, in exactly that order how they are listed here and this is this is just another way of um, saying that and coming back to what we already had discussed um, you should then basically pick the uh, um, the indication based on the flexor strength what and the, the class classification where you should be with, with what type of indication and then as a second one we we want to uh, look at the translucency the aesthetics and this I think is the best slide to also explain that not sure if I already mentioned that but normally the the stronger a material is or at least that's applicable for zirconia uh, the uh, maybe even for, for all of them I would have to think about that the uh, for zirconia for sure it is the stronger and flexor strength a material is the uh, uh, more opaque it normally is and the more translucent or the more aesthetic a material is the, the weaker the flexor strength value will be and this slide here if you know which is which I should have maybe placed here but I can show you low translucent high translucent high translucent plus or HD plus and super high translucent um, on, on those and then you can see exactly the same uh, what I just said is happening the very uh, low translucency very strong very high translucency very quote-unquote weak the um, particles in the grain and the grains in the material are uh, being larger on a uh, usually on a um, um, more translucent zirconia and smaller and more stable on a um, on a uh, more opacious and stronger zirconia. Okay, so here again we can see the the different indications what we could do with what materials. So yes, the the ZI would be perfect for all uh, widths or spans. Um, with 1200 megapascal is very hard and very durable, but it's just unfortunately not the most aesthetic uh, zirconia. Still though, there are cases where you have to cover a very dark stump shade where you actually are going uh, purposely onto a low translucent material. Uh, or it's maybe some metal you have to cover up, it's maybe an, an implant case and you don't have a lot of space there and you're afraid that the metal's gonna shine through and this might be the material to go for. Solid HD plus with um, 1100, and unappreciated with um, with a thousand, we can also do all uh, spans and and uh, all indication types with it. And uh, on the effects, like I already said, that three unit bridges, no attachments, and the uh, suprenity. Oh, I'm gonna uh, maybe skip suprenity a little bit because it's not here available from what I know. But the lisi might uh, might be here a good comparison then for that. The uh, 420, um, roughly 420 megapascals, single crown indicated, be dynamic with 150 to 160. That's, uh, I think I already said that earlier. I might have mixed it up. I think I might have uh, said Mark II, but I meant dynamic. The uh, Mark II might be a little less even. Um, 
the Villa blocks, glass ceramic, no, that they are right there. That's the Mark II, 154, so I was about right. And uh, the lithium disilicate or silicate with uh, 500, or as previously was known, with about 380. And um, you get some more information here again at the bottom of the classification of the different materials. And that's for sure something where you can stress Google and uh, look up those different uh, classifications for indications and you should find more information on that. The materials have limits um, and Zirconia eventually has, even though we are able to, to make full arch cases, some situations where um, certain factors just um, accumulate um, and stack on top of each other. Like for example, if you have a very large width um, and it is a mandible where you have the, the flex of the mandible um, coming on top of that large width, maybe you have poor bone uh, and maybe also functional disorders, all those things coming together might maybe then not be the best choice to, to do a zirconia case on that. Uh, otherwise, it might result into fracture. And uh, then just keep in mind that uh, there are other materials also still available, like our chrome cobalt um, sintra metal, what we call Sintron. You can also make full large cases with that. And uh, it, it has, yet again, other values and, and, and flexor strength and durability. So here, maybe a more uh, visual way of what I was trying to say earlier with the different uh, aesthetics. So once we figured out the strength and, and how strong our products need to be in order to match which classification, uh, in order to accomplish which indication, then we know how aesthetic our product can get, can become. So if we if we know this here on the very right side, I know there's maybe confusion because this says LT and this one says LT, but this here is the uh, uh, lithium disilicate LT version. So you see our uh, super high translucent is basically identically, uh, identically looking. Uh, I can not see a difference when, when I'm looking at actual samples of the same same unit milled. Here I might be able to tell like something, but if I have two crowns in my hand, uh, a, uh, an Emacs LT and a uh, solid FX crown, I, I don't see a difference uh, in between the two. Now, if I know I want to make a, a bridge, a four unit bridge, let's say, or five unit bridge, and I know I cannot use this material because it would not be strong enough. I cannot use uh, this material here because we only approve it for three unit bridges. So I would have to go to a HT or actually it would be nice if you're in between there's the uh, HT plus missing. So you can imagine something in between here for the HT plus. And uh, then that will be the material of my choice because I get the highest um, aesthetics, the highest translucency, whilst maintaining that megapascal strength, what uh, the, the indication, the four unit or five unit bridge, whatever I said, uh, requires. Then to explain you a little bit about the um, inside material once more, uh, what is actually responsible for the uh, um, translucency increase is uh, in between the uh, ZI and the other materials, um, like all solids, all HG plus, uh, solid effects, is a, a different distribution of aluminum oxide. So that's was the classic or the first way of, of uh, getting higher translucency in there by redistributing and, and uh, the amounts of aluminum oxide in the material. And uh, that also then is basically the reminder to Zinter low translucent zirconias um, that includes our ZI um, may not be applicable for every single zirconia out there, but it likely is. Sinter them separately in a separate tray on separate beads. You can of course uh, pour the beads out if you're not having any LTE zirconia and put them in a Ziploc bag and label them low translucent. 
and only use your high translucent HD plus and um, super high translucent in the beads because otherwise that aluminum oxide will transfer during your cycles into the beads from the beads into uh, your high translucent HG plus and FX and affect them and then you're looking into chalky units. And uh, if you're having issues with translucency, that, that might be the reason. If you're, if you're looking at the pictures on our uh, website, etc., and you're, you're thinking, man, I, ca I cannot get it to what it looks there. Uh, I can guarantee you it is possible. I do many samples here, like they are looking on our website, but you have to follow the, the steps and keep the, the LT separate. If you're in the lab mixing different materials, then try to um, center each new material what you're, what you're doing um, as, as a test just to by itself on maybe new beads, then you know what the material is capable of, what it's supposed to look like, and then you can try to mix and match, and then you, you immediately would then know when something goes wrong. And uh, the I would, I would just put all the LT zirconias on, on separate beads, and uh, even on the high translucent, super high translucent ones, uh, you probably want to introduce them to each other in, in a little by little to see when there would be issues. And besides the aluminum oxide, uh, which has been redistributed, the yttrium, what you can see here, is in a, in a very different uh, mix in the material. And the yttrium basically is responsible, the, the amount of the yttrium is responsible uh, for keeping it in the uh, uh, on the salt effects in the cubicle phase. That's why it's called a cubicle zirconia uh, instead of being in the tetracolor phase. And uh, that's also um, the, the reason that it's a little bit more uh, stable because it is, and why you could maybe see that increase in the, in the stability, etc. I'm no expert, I'm no engineer, but uh, uh, the way how I've gotten that explained is that you have a, a monoclean tetragonal and a cubicle phase in the zirconia. And uh, from the monoclean, during the solderization goes into the tetragonal phase, and then eventually in, into, the, into the cubicle phase, where it, if the iterum amount is high enough, might um, stay there. So if over long-term aging, uh, something on the cubicle zirconia uh, would be then responsible that it, that it, during the aging changes the phase, it would then be on the tetragon uh, phase and not the, the not the monoclean phase. So uh, on the uh, other zirconias that might not be um, exactly like like that, uh, depending on the amount of yttrium, depending on I don't know what, but uh, for the cubicle zirconia that should be pretty much like that if it were even changing the the phase. Anyhow, we. Uh, see here on the grouping as well again the HT plus is right in between also all HT plus um, uh, and or is actually here you could make a little plus in there uh, the uh, because this I, I just see they uh, was replaced I was normally our solid here so you could basically put our solid here but the solid um, like I said will fade out um, there's no reason that people are not getting a nice aesthetic product uh, if it maintains the same strength. And you can see here very easy that we have uh, pre-shades available in all 16 uh, Vida shades for our HT. And that we have also pre-shades, but not in all 16 Vida shades on the FX. Um, I think this, this, and this are um, very popular products from, from what I know, talking to people, to laboratories, etc. Some folks uh, still maintain a fair amount of the white HG plus and the FX. So it's I don't normally it's this. If somebody likes appreciates, then it's uh, the this one and this one. And if somebody's using the white zirconias, it's it's those uh, three here, where you're being a little bit more reliable with the appreciated ones. Um, and get repeatable results easy and quick, where on the white zirconias, your blank library might be a little bit less extensive. You have more variety with the vertical heights available and you can save maybe a couple of bucks per restoration there. 
and uh, you're a little bit more customizable. So patient wishes, of course, are aesthetics. Um, there's for low aesthetics, there's numerous options available, but for uh, very high aesthetics, there's uh, very few options. And I'm, I'm a true believer that the solid effects multilayer is the most aesthetic multilayer uh, zirconia out there. I've not seen anything better just yet. Um, patient wishes, of course, uh, might, it has to be cheap. It has to be the prettiest restoration for the least amount of money, <laughs> always. And it has to be done yesterday, right? Because they have to go on a vacation. So we see um, a fast turnaround time. And so uh, that opens maybe the next question if the material is capable of speed centering. When I'm saying speed centering, then I mean our two hour cycle, which uh, including the cool down um, when it's cool to the touch is uh, about approximately two and a half hours. And uh, then of course we, uh, we have to look at other things like is maybe metal your only option because you have a broxor uh, or and, and no space or is maybe metal not an option because the patient has an allergy so you have to go to a very strong zirconia um, what is your your limitations in the space uh, is it posterior is it anterior um, is it a broxor all those different things do you have a discolored uh, dye stump like it's written here um things things like those are of course all to consider then uh, the bonding also uh, is something to consider where the uh, zirconia supposedly doesn't etch and i'm not quite sure because uh, i hope i'm not getting seven thousand emails now because i said that because i i actually googled it as well um and there there is a little bit contradicting information out there. I actually have seen um, a, a study which was done that, that you can etch it. Um, however, that's uh, what kind of bonding method are you gonna choose? Are you gonna cement it? Are you gonna bond it? What are you gonna do with it? Maybe all those uh, questions and, and what your beliefs are might affect the material selection is what I'm trying to say with that. And uh, here we have it, same thing with the uh, with this meaning a light dye, a, a medium um, stained dye, and, and a metal or uh, a very dark stained um, dye when you're placing a restoration on. Of course, you, you would be less likely to use solid effects um, because you're that translucent on something like this. And on a very uh, light shade, you would be very likely to use something like this. Um, and yeah. Now, uh, this is basically just the same thing in other words, where we see again that uh, what type of uh, indications we can do with those. And uh, here, those highlighted the three unit bridge, including moyo region, anterior, posterior, um, single crowns. And we see a CI can do that as well. Um, and as an SHT multilayer can do that as well, um, but uh, maybe not a hybrid abutment material uh, because it's it's just too light for that. Yeah, and it's just a different way of saying that. So to to look into the materials real quick, what they what they can do. I already said uh, the salt FX multilayer um, is. It's very shade stable. It comes in all 16 Vita shades, and it, it is suitable for um, veneers or for single crowns or three unit bridges, including the molar region. Um, not up to there, including the molar region. Uh, it is 700 megapascal strong, and uh, the uh, um, key features are basically besides that it comes in those 16 Vita uh, shades that you can have a blank library in only using 10 blanks in your library, meaning um, one of those blanks covers two Vita shades. Some are overlapping and of course there is uh, bleed shades in there. So with 10 of those blanks, you, you can uh, have them all. We uh, just 
uh, emailed a news flyer out that we are now making small blocks um, as well, single for single crowns, and also a little bit longer ones for like three unit bridges. And we, uh, if you go to our website, you see a nine fold holder, uh, which is great then because those solid effects, uh, multi layer links, uh, are available then once you're stuck from the distributor partners. Uh, in the single blocks and the three unit bridge blocks. So you can pop the nine fold holder into your motion too. And uh, you basically uh, don't need a blank change or anything. And you can make up to nine different shades in, uh, in one night. And uh, the multi layer comes in 14, 16, and 20 millimeter vertical heights. And in those two shapes, the 71, or more commonly known as the D shape, what you're seeing here, and the 98 millimeter blocks, where you see here in the background with the notch. The, um, the shades are here all listed. So, like I said, if one covers two shades, we have a bleach A1, then an A2, A3, A3.5, and A4 a bleach b1 b1 b2 and, and so on and so on and then um, the uh, uh, the the heights here of 14 16 and 20 where the uh, the gradient stretches or compacts more so so that is something to keep in mind on how tall is the restoration you're you're gonna you're gonna go for um, Think about that first uh, bef before you're just nesting it in a block, uh, and or keep that in mind that that it might differ then um, depending on on uh, what your results are. If you tried the material and were maybe unhappy with it, maybe that was the reason. Because if you have a very very uh, short vertical, because it is a, a second molar maybe, and you're nesting that in a 20 millimeter block, yeah, of course that might be too light because uh, it was a 20 millimeter block and you nested it all, all somewhere on the on the top. Maybe it would have been better to use the 14 millimeter on a very small vertical height so that you at least get some uh, uh, shade gradient in there. And the um, reason here that we are still promoting and advertising our 71 millimeter shape is uh, if you're thinking about those full arch cases with how they are now popular, this blank shape is ideal for them. We have very little waste. And we can basically make one arch in there, including the, the, the block. The solid effects pre shades, I'm, uh, I want to make you aware that they are there, but since they're all quote unquote only coming in six basic shades, um, the, uh, the, uh, my personal opinion would be I would probably go with the multi layer option just because you are getting the, the uh, gradient in there and you can still stack both of them and make a cutback restoration on a uh, FX multi-layer and uh, you might get even better aesthetics um, by doing that uh, and or I, I'll probably stock the multi-layer personally stock the multi-layer and uh, the white but they are an option if you're doing a lot of cutback restorations and, and you are um, rather working with the base shades and then stacking the porcelain from there uh, but you don't want to mess with any preset stains and they're a great option. Now they uh, come in uh, 14, 16, and 20 as well, same shapes. And just to throw that out there, the, uh, all the pre-shades, no matter if they're pre-shades, um, as uh, all 16 reader shades available, if they're coming in, in those um, uh, base shades, or if they're coming as multi-layer, it's always gonna be 14, 16, and 20 millimeter. And the other uh, heights where we're getting with, with uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 25, that's usually then a white zirconia. Okay, coming to the solid effects white. Um, same strength, all the same, same consistency, um, but comes in white available. And like I said, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 25, all heights, and same 71 and 98. So um, here, we see if I would be able to nest that in a 12 millimeter puck versus a 14. I actually can uh, get the 12 millimeter puck a little less expensive than the 14, so I can save a couple of uh, bucks right there. Um, here we see a, a different version uh, of, of comparison from our solid FX wide 
versus a uh, lithium disilicate and an LT version. And uh, we uh, have a 0. Is it 6? Might be 0. 0.7. Um, what you should keep on the, depending where it is, I want to say, uh, minimum thickness. The 0. 0.7 might be for the posters, and the 0. 0.6 might be for everything else. The uh, um, that's a lot less, that's half what uh, you would have to keep up with a uh, lithium disilicate. You might be, uh, depending on, on uh, what, what rules you're following, uh, keep 1.5 millimeter uh, in your central occlusion. I think it might have been updated to one millimeter now to make the material more uh, com competitive. But uh, yeah, it depends also um, where you're getting the lithium disilicate or lithium silicate from, I think. Okay, so now looking at the HG plus whites, um, I already mentioned 1100 megapascal on the pre shades is a little less. It's uh, on the pre shades, it is uh, 1000. Uh, suitable for those uh, all on four restorations. Uh, looks very pretty. I'm super happy with the material. Of course, yes, on anterior cases, you still have to make a cutback, but you can get very, very pretty looking results on, on uh, all 4000 or 1100 megapascal. That's, that's crazy. Um, if we compare that to an ZI where we were coming from a couple of years ago. Um, here you see we have that 10 millimeter, what I said earlier, uh, versus on the uh, FX, the, it starts at the 12 millimeter. Here we're starting at 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 25 millimeter. So you get quite some options there. Uh, two different um, uh, staining methods available there, the aesthetics and the fastetics. And, um, the pre shades come in all 16 Vita shades. And then uh, on the on the pre shades, the only thing to keep in mind, they are monolithically shaded, so there's not going to be a gradient in there. If you if you want a gradient um, and you still want to use the HD plus, then you would have to custom um, uh, stain that. It's very simple to do with the um, fast statics uh, staining method or in easier words, you could say a double dip. You dip it into or brush it into a um, uh, dimmer, which is colorless, and just basically uh, saturates those those cusp tips with the dimmer, and then acts as an inhibitor if you want so. Uh, because if you dip it then into the shade, uh, there's already dimmer there and, and saturated those those cusp tips, and there's in between it will it will come together, and then you get a nice little gradient that going. Um, then the uh, um, the reasons here for the pre shades are obvious that you have a reliable and re uh, uh, reproducible process with the sh with uh, shade stable process. HG plus um, comes in all 16 shades and same like I already said 14, 16, 20 is applicable for everything which comes pre shade from us. The ZI uh, is only as wide available, but the strongest material and the most opacious. Um, and they all can be used with the Fastetics uh, method. And of course, you could be uh, also on the Aesthetics method. You could apply that to the um, effects liquid, even using a separate custom tailored staining kit for the uh, cubicle zirconia, the FX kit. There is a staining guide available. If uh, you want a copy of this guide, uh, let me know. Just shoot me an email. My email address should be at the end of the presentation, uh, but it is richard.yench at amagabor.com. You can also call me here and, and chat with me about your experiences if you want. And uh, last but not least, the uh, sintering. So we have uh, conventional or speed sintering. Available where you see in the blue graph here the speed center or optimized cycle or for the speed center furnace to use Samotherm S. And here the true speed single cycle where you can see has a duration for about two hours. I want to say it's two hours and six minutes, but then it's on very high temperature because it's basically done here at 990, uh, some, something like that. And so it's glowing red when it opens up and you want to have to wait for about 30 minutes before it's on somehow uh, 
maybe a little higher than room temperature of 60 degrees or something so that you can actually touch it. Um, and all our zirconias uh, are approved to be used with such a speed center cycle. Um, as long as it's not uh, faster than that, we, uh, we can allow you to work with that. Um, and you're on the safe side. The thing if we're talking about sinterization here is sinter temperature uh, has an effect on your shades. Not only, and you might have already heard that, uh, the, the, the translucency is being affected from your center end temperature, but also the shade is being affected. So keep that in mind if you're working with pre-shades that uh, we for sure developed our um, a shade guide from 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 or, or shade concept from scratch um, on the solid FX multilayer and the uh, the, the, the the HD plus pre shades and they uh, have all been tested and developed for the central temperature of 1450 centigrade. Um, so you see this was all the same shade and how much different the the color looks like. Uh, on the different center temperatures. Um, if your colors are off, might be a center temperature. Maybe purposely because you maybe raised it up to something higher to get higher translucency out of it. I would uh, remind you on, on, on that moment also, uh, keep in mind higher the center end temperature, um, you're also weakening the product um, and you might lose your uh, um, warranties and, and etc. from the manufacturers. Um, if you're not sticking to to what uh, the, the material should be processed at, but uh, for sure keep that in mind with the shades. Here, if we're looking at the that's the slide what I was looking for with the uh, bubble bath and the razor foam. Here we have a very large um, grain structure on. Uh, 1700 and on 1450 there's much smaller or 1350 again smaller smaller and that here basically um, explains it in a graph in a, in, a gra in a graph for you the same thing that the center temperature here uh, has an immediate effect on uh, flexural strength and contrast or translucency, if you want so, right? So your um, flexural strength is on, a, is on a good spot right here. And uh, the uh, contrast goes down, meaning your uh, restoration gets more translucent, but it's, it's not a lot. And we think that the uh, 1450 here is, is the best value for um, a long-term stable product. And you see how uniform that here looks like. It's getting a little bit more unorganized, I would call it, um, in, an, in an easy way. And this is just very, very uniform here, whilst being on that sweet spot of, of being uh, an aesthetic product, but also a, uh, a strong and stable product. Okay, now we see a little bit uh, uh, also how that affects the, uh, the CTE. And uh, we see that monoclin monoclinic um, tetragonal and cubical zirconia here as a little repeat from what I was saying earlier. Um, here as well, we see the CI solids, the solid HT plus and the solid FX on their structure and as a reminder that the correct firing management is essential because from what our R&D looked at is that all, uh, or 80, sorry, not all, 80% of all the, the cracks in the zirconium are due to thermal shocks and uh, incorrect cooling. So the, the thermal shock could of course be that the central cycle was too fast, uh, or it also could be that your porcelain cycle was too fast, or it could be that you maybe introduced um, thermal shock by using a dull diamond, the wrong uh, diamond maybe together uh, with uh, too high, high of a speed of your RPM uh, on, on your handpiece or high speed, maybe not uh, having any water cooling going on, 
too much pressure going on. Um, those things are usually then the, the reason. Okay, as a conclusion, we see a couple of cases which uh, have been done with our Saconia. Beautiful cases here. Um, probably have heard of Lucas Lamont already and uh, Dr. Miles Cohn. The, uh, the two of us have been lecturing for us, so has uh, Alex Wünsche uh, been lecturing for us in Chicago a couple of times. This is here, uh, Benjamin Fodler from uh, Master Dental Technician in Germany. Made a, made a great example of how the products can be combined, where the, uh, um, I'm going to have to translate that, FC, that means Fonzan, that means your anterior cases here are FX multilayer, and the SZ, the uh, Seitenzahn, um, he made the posteriors out of HT+. And they together are combined to uh, a really nice aesthetic looking case, while it's the posteriors are having the strength, what might be required on the posterior, but he has the, the high aesthetic product on the anterior. 